Yo, good afternoon, viewers of the tube. My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Crypto and a Cold One. Got it, baby. Today's featured brewski is from Tampa, Florida. It's their Invasion Tropical Pale Ale out of Cigar City Brewing. Too bad I don't have a big old fat cigar. Mm, that's good. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and of course, follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Chico Crypto. So today I have a very special episode for all the viewers. I'm going to be breaking down the coins that are currently in my portfolio and the percentages of each. This is the first time I've done anything like this and the community has been asking for something like this for a long time. The number one coin I hold in terms of percentages is a risk and it has been getting hit with a lot of unwarranted FUD as of late. I think you guys know exactly what coin I'm talking about, Elastos, and it makes up 22% of my portfolio. Why Elastos? Well, they are aiming to create a new internet based on blockchain technology for IDs, P2P networks, and sandbox runtime environments. The technology of Elastos is revolutionary, but the team had to make a critical decision to unlock angel holders tokens and three-year lockup holders tokens early. Even after all this, why is it still the largest percentage of my portfolio? Well, a month ago, Fang Han, Jihan Wu, and other Elastos investors have all agreed to pledge ELA to a fund in the aim to support Elastos. The fund is in the exploration phase, and they aim to open the fund to the public, where investors pledge ELA and they are held for a time period of three years, while an equal amount of stablecoin is used for the actual funding. After the time period, the investors can expect a large return on their investment, while growing the ecosystem without selling any ELA. Just take the time to think about what this means. Big stuff on the horizon, i.e. index fund for ELA dApps. And it's the reason they had to drop the lockups, especially if the fund will be traded in the US. What is my second largest holding? The granddaddy of them all, Bitcoin. Bitcoin makes up 20% of my portfolio right now, and for good reason. It is the storage of value coin and will be the most dominant cryptocurrency for the foreseeable future. Bitcoin is the market maker. No new influxes of money will enter the total overall market cap unless Bitcoin goes up. I recommend always having at least 20% of your portfolio in Bitcoin at all times. And in certain market conditions, that amount should even go up to 35% to 100%. My third largest holding is NEO, and that makes up 17% of my portfolio. Why do I hold such a large portion of NEO? Follow the developers, my friends. The ecosystem of NEO has grown exponentially since last year. NEO has a growing independent developer communities popping up across the globe. Of course, we know of the city of Zion, but there is New Economy Labs in China, NEO Research in Brazil, and the Chinese gaming-focused community Black Cat. Now, why are so many people choosing to build on NEO? Because something is there, technology-wise, that has benefits over Ethereum. Follow the developers, my friends. Who could be number four? It's close, but Ontology edges out Ethereum narrowly for the fourth spot. I am a big fan of the smart economy, and Ontology is that final piece, the identity and chain that will connect large enterprises to the public chain of NEO. People always ask me, the enterprises is where the money is. It's big business equals big money. Let me stop that right there. The public and all of its assets combined is worth more than the handful of enterprises that launch their own private chains. That is why, in my opinion, NEO will always have a higher market cap than Ontology. But Ontology has Ont Gas, which is producing a higher percentage ROI than NEO and NEO Gas. Also, Ontology has staking, which is another form of passive income. That is why Ontology is my number four with 11% of my portfolio. Of course, Ethereum has to make a percentage. Anyone who doesn't have Ethereum in their portfolio is downright insane. The reason I'm bullish on NEO is the same reason I'm bullish on Ethereum. Developers. Ethereum is the most built out and developed on platform, hands down. Looking at CryptoCodeWatch.com, a great tool, by the way, if you're looking for development by GitHub data, you can see that out of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, Ethereum dominates in every category. 24-hour commits, seven-day commits, one-year commits, every damn ranking category, seven-day changes, developers, favorites. Ethereum plain out dominates and makes others look small in comparison. That is why Ethereum is number five and makes up 10% of my portfolio. 
Based on the ecosystem that Ethereum is building, my next two picks are contributing to the future of that ecosystem, and both will be integral parts of its future. Number six, with 5% of my portfolio and a coin that I called six months ago as being the first ERC-20 to Coinbase, is Xerox Protocol. Xerox is a decentralized exchange protocol based on relayers. Anyone can build out their own relayer and start filling and matching cryptocurrency orders. The ecosystem Xerox is building within another ecosystem, Ethereum, is why I am so bullish. They have 14 relayers built already and Paradex, the largest one, was recently purchased by Coinbase. A little Chico research uncovered something special too. We all know who Bitfinex is. Well, they have released their own DEX, Ethfinex, which is already based on the Xerox protocol, but isn't part of the ecosystem. Well, from a blog post, it looks like they... Not oh, that bullshit head. God, y'all. It's okay. Oh yeah, cryptocurrency, baby. Well, from a blog post, it looks like what they built will be able to integrate with 0x version 2 smart contracts, another big player becoming part of the 0x ecosystem. Number seven is crucial and is actually misunderstood by many how critical it will be to Ethereum. The project is Chainlink, the decentralized oracle system for Ethereum. I made a video post about it two weeks ago explaining how crucial it is, so check that out if you want a deeper explanation. Basically, every Ethereum project is going to need to retrieve outside data from the centralized world, and Chainlink is one of the only solutions for that in a decentralized manner. Chainlink makes up 4% of my portfolio. Number eight goes back to what I reiterate all the time on this channel, follow the developers. Even though this project is getting slack for how it ran its ICO and the DPoS block producers being centralized, people are still building on the damn thing. EOS is the project and looking back at CryptoCodeWatch.com, we can see that out of the top 10 cryptos, it ranks second in almost every category. Not close to the development as Ethereum, but for the time it has been launched, it is gaining a following, which means there must be something there. EOS has 3% of my portfolio. Payment rails, now those are important to the future success of cryptocurrency. How can businesses, including banks, benefit from crypto settlements? Well, the next two coins are payment rail coins and each make up 1.5% of my portfolio for a total of 3%. And no, I'm not talking about Ripple, I'm talking about Stellar, Lumens, and Bizant. IBM just launched the World Wire, which is a blockchain-based payment system using Stellar's blockchain to clear and settle cross-border payments. A clear competitor to Ripple's XRapid system, and the one I'm picking for the future. For the second payment rail, Bizant, here is a nice little tidbit. They're also working with IBM. Coincidence? I think not, as IBM wants to settle payments for enterprises in every region, including Korea. The final 5% is made up of a mix of more risky investments with lower caps and larger cap coins that possibly have a big future. Gencoin, Amisego, Nex, Icon, Walton, Waves, Neogas, and Ontology Gas, Enigma, Engine, and more. You gotta diversify that risk, and as you can see, I'm banking on the smart economy. But if that doesn't turn out as I thought, I will always have my backups. Cheers, and as always, I'll see you next time.